Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibration to Gas Detection series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the MSA Altair 5 and we're going to look at how to replace the sensors in there. Okay, so this is going to be your LEL sensor right here. It's the metal one, explosion proof housing. It's your COSH or your COH. So if either one's having a problem, your CO or your H2S, this is the one to replace. Then here's your oxygen sensor. It's the big purple one. Okay, three prongs at the bottom. One thing you want to check on any oxygen sensor, just make sure on the pins there isn't any corrosion or anything along those lines. And we're going to check on the board to make sure the same when we replace it. Okay, so while we're getting this screwed out, first thing you want to do, get two screws for your battery. Unscrew those. And pull it apart. You just want to be careful when you pull it apart. Just make sure that comes out. This is also the screw that holds this piece of the case in right here. So just be careful of that. Put the battery off to the side. And we're now going to get the top two screws. Okay, so to open it, I'm going to pull apart the clamshell right here, just like that. And just be careful when you're pulling it apart here. Uh, there's a little gasket. Sometimes this gasket will stick to here, sometimes it will stick to here. It doesn't really matter either way. We're going to take that off. You can see it kind of comes down here and lays against this. But for now, I'm just going to put that back over here. Hold it down nice and flat, make sure it fits in there well. Uh, one little trick is you put this over the horn here. That's the port that goes to this here, so I just want to make sure that's nice and flush. Okay, I'll put that aside. Okay, so looking at the sensors in the unit, here's our LEL sensor, here's our oxygen sensor, here is our COH2S, and this here is a dummy sensor. So if you have a fifth sensor in there, like a sulfur dioxide or a nitrogen dioxide, that's going to be right there. But we'll just take that out, put it off to the side for now. Okay, so here's your COH2S right here. So if we were going to replace that, we would take this one out and we would check it over here and we would pop this one in here. And so you know the, the last three digit code there, that is going to be your date code. So you want to pay attention to that. Uh, it's depending on which sticker you've got here. Uh, some of them might read a little bit differently, but you can usually find that three digit code somewhere on there. Okay, so we'll put this one back in for now. Pretty easy, just line up the four pins pop them in and snap it in and it's good. LEL, same thing, we just check it out here. I'm gonna swap it out with the other one. Uh, three digit code on this one is right here and that's gonna tell you it's the first two are the month and the third one is the year. Now when you're reinstalling this sensor or putting it in, I want you to look for this notch here. You see this? So you can probably see that in the camera pretty well. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that notch faces up. Put that in there and then so it'd be the gold pins are on the top and then you put it in. Uh, we get a lot of calls about people who install their new LEL sensor and they're like, hey, this thing is reading negative. What the heck? Uh, what the heck usually is, is that this notch is on the bottom and it's reading exactly the opposite of what it should. That causes some issues. That's not what you want. All right, so make sure you install that right. So here's the O2. Now, I want you to take a look at this. I don't know if you can see this very well, but there is... I'm going to try and zoom in that a little bit more. You see that corrosion on there? That white powdery stuff? That means the sensor is no good anymore. It's time to go. You look at the date code on it. 056. So that means it was from uh, January, February, March, April, May. It means it was from May of 16. So this sensor is way dead and needs to go away. So we're just going to take that one. We're going to put it over here. And we'll take our new sensor here. This one has an 019 date code. So this is from January of 19 and you install it here. Now one thing we want to do is because this was on here we want to check the board and make sure there's not a lot of like, corrosion built up or powdery residue or anything like that because that'll negatively impact our sensors. So I'm looking in there, it doesn't, it doesn't look bad. That's decently clean, so this is pretty good to go. Uh, if it looks like it's a little rough, you can always just take a uh, Q-tip or a, a piece of foam. You, don't want, you want to make sure you don't get any fibers in there, but you can just wipe that off little methyl alcohol, you can actually get in there, but I would recommend using a foam tip that looks more like this. This is 
something like that. Uh, and this way, if you use the methyl alcohol on it, it won't leave any residue behind on your board. Okay. So, I'm gonna install that here in the system. And now we've got our sensors installed. We figured we didn't need to replace these ones, but we replaced the O2. We're gonna reinstall the dummy sensor. Put that one right in here. This just kind of sits in there. It doesn't really plug in, plug in, just kind of sits in the prongs. Just leave that there lightly. And then you want to do this, this hose will come out. You just want to pop that back in there. Make sure it's nice and snug so it doesn't wander around on you. And then we're just gonna fold them back together. Sip the screws back up. Okay, now we'll take our battery, put the battery back on. Now one thing that's going to happen is it turns itself back on when you install the battery sometimes. It's kind of a pain because we don't really want it on right now. Okay, this one didn't turn on. That's good. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We find. Uh, one thing you're going to want to do, now we've installed a new oxygen sensor. We want to give it about an hour of sitting in there before we do anything with it. Uh, so you can turn it on and check it, but don't bother zeroing it or calibrating it. You just want to have it installed in there. Let it sit. What happens is you need the oxygen sensor to sit in room air for a little while. Uh, that way it, it starts to acclimate to being not in the packaging. Uh, and, and that'll, you'll watch it when you plug it in, it'll start up super high, it'll be around like, it'll show you 30% and you'll watch it drop. And if you zero it to 20.8, what'll happen is it'll just keep dropping past that and you'll have to keep zeroing it over and over and over again. So you don't want to deal with that, so just let it sit for an hour, then start it up, and then give it a, a zero and a calibration. Uh, one other thing you want to do when you're installing the sensors is always record the serial numbers and the date codes. You know, then if they die or anything along those lines, you know you've got a warranty on them. For the 5, the warranty is 2 years per sensor. If you have a 5X unit, those are usually 3 years per sensor. So it's a little bit different and the sensor technology is a little different. Okay. If you have any questions on the installation or anything along those lines or you want to pick up sensors from us, so you can get it at any time. Our phone number is 734-736-0539 and that's our main line. You can press one for sales, but we actually stock all these sensors in-house. In so if you need anything for the 5 or the Altair 4, we've always got them in, in stock and ready to ship. All right, if you have any questions, our support box is support at idealcalibrations.com, and we'd be happy to answer anything you have. And uh, just be safe out there, and have a great day. <laughs>